Hello, and welcome to the Design for Learning tutorial on using Blackboard Collaborate, a learning platform for meetings, classes, and other web and video conference work. This tutorial represents lessons learned in teacher practice sessions. These were live, play-in-the-sandbox sessions that allowed students to try meeting technology together in a safe space before teaching real students. Each group had an experienced moderator, and this tutorial represents the most common tools and tips we came across in all of our sessions. Blackboard Collaborate is evolving software and highly customizable. Keep in mind that what you see here may not exactly match your own instance of the software, and the tools are changing all the time. Once you enter your meeting room, Blackboard Collaborate looks like this. Quick access buttons at the bottom middle of your screen allow you to turn your microphone and video feed on and off. When you click to share your video feed, this screen will let you preview exactly what you will share. When you're ready to go live, click Share Video. When you're live, the meeting room will look like this. The webcam icon is blue when your video is on. A view of your video stream is available in the lower left-hand corner of the screen. You can choose when to work with audio and video by clicking on the icons in the middle of your screen. You can tell they're turned off when there's a slash through them. The tab on the bottom right hand of the screen is the most important. This is how you access the main menu, where you control most aspects of a meeting. When you click the tab, a panel opens on the right-hand side of your screen. At the bottom of the panel, you'll see four icons. Because my default is audio and video settings, the gear icon is highlighted and that menu is open. In the main menu, you control audio and video, notification, and meeting session settings. First, let's look at the audio and video settings. From here, you can set up camera and microphone options, it is a great idea to run through this process to ensure your meeting goes as smoothly as possible. If someone is having trouble with their audio, you can offer the telephone call-in number and PIN. Finally, you have manual controls for changing your own speaker and microphone volume. When you set up your camera and microphone, the first step is the audio test for your microphone. Speak to see if the bar next to the microphone icon moves. If it does, then click, yes, it's working. And if it doesn't, click, no, I need help. Step two is the video test. If you can see yourself as expected, click, yes, it's working. And if not, click, no, I need help. We recommend testing your audio and video every time you use Collaborate, even if you've successfully used it before. That's the best way to be sure things will go smoothly as a presenter or an attendee. Remember, testing your audio and video won't turn it on in the meeting. You'll need to use your quick access buttons for that. Back in the main menu, let's look at the session settings. Click the down arrow on the right-hand side to expand the menu. You can see that all session settings are checked by default allowing all participants the ability to share their audio and video, post messages in chat, and draw on the whiteboard. Consider how collaborative your environment should be to accomplish your goals and adjust these settings as you need. For more dynamic control, you can go to the Participants tab where you'll have the ability to change individual participant settings. In the upper right-hand corner of the menu, you can also click on the circular symbol with three dots inside to search for a particular participant, or mute everyone, especially in cases where there's a lot of background noise you need to cut out. If you click on the chat icon at the bottom of the menu, you can chat with your participants and they can chat with each other or you. If you'd like, you can keep your chat screen or any other menu screen open while you hold your meeting. In general, your screen will look something like this, unless you're sharing your webcam, screen, or a document, which will show in the big center block instead of the welcome cartoon. But how do you open content there? This brings us to the final menu option for sharing content, 
the icon that looks like a box with an arrow on it. You can share a blank whiteboard where you and your participants can work together, share an application that's already open on your computer, like a document or your web browser, or your whole screen to show what you're working on in real time. You can upload individual files to share with your attendees, and more advanced interactive content includes polling and breakout groups if you want to experiment with them. Here's what the whiteboard looks like. Depending on your participant settings, everyone can type, draw, or otherwise create content together. The tools for the whiteboard, like a pencil to draw with, are in the upper left-hand corner of the screen. When I choose Share Application, Collaborate offers me the option to share my entire screen or just an application. Let's try clicking Just an Application first. Collaborate shows me applications that are already open on my computer. In this case, I only had the Google Chrome browser open. Even if I had more options, I can only choose one application to share at a time. Collaborate takes me right to that application without having to click around my computer looking for it. You might want to share the entire screen if you want to show more than one application at once more easily. Collaborate asks you which screen you want to share if you have multiple monitors like me. Click whichever one you'd like to share first. After a brief moment to adjust, your screen is shared and showing your desktop. At the bottom of the shared screen, you'll find a button to stop sharing, which will take you back into the meeting room. When you click on Share Files in the Sharing menu, a window opens where you're able to choose files for upload. You can either click on Add Files to browse on your computer or drag and drop them into the gray square. Choose from images, PowerPoint, or PDF files, but keep in mind that Collaborate only shares files as images, so whatever file you share will be converted to an image regardless of its original format. I've selected an image to share, which has been staged below the gray file adding box. This is just showing that it's ready to be shared. You need to click Share Now to show it to your participants. If you choose not to share, this menu will act as a place to store images for use later. The shared image appears in the meeting room like this. Any shared file is basically a whiteboard with a starter image in it. You can annotate and draw on it just like on the whiteboard using the tools in the upper left hand corner. When you're ready to close the file, click the button in the upper right hand corner to stop sharing it. That's it for the main menu. Close it by clicking on the colored tab in the lower right hand side of the screen, just like you did to open it. Now check out the tab in the upper left hand side of the screen. Once you click on this tab, you'll have quick access to phone and PIN numbers to call in case someone's computer audio isn't working, as well as the ability to report an issue, learn more, or leave the meeting altogether. That's it for the basics of Blackboard Collaborate. Get in there and have fun trying it out. Our project partners include IMLS, SCRLC, ESLN, and the iSchool at SU. Design for Learning has been made possible by a grant from the U.S. Institute of Museum and Library Services.